Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Young Researchers Institute. My name is Ishan Jain, and today I'm going to walk you through the proven path to winning science fairs and getting published in top journals, even if you have no research experience at all. So in this presentation, first, we're going to talk about our story. And that's basically like, you know, how we started, what our inspiration was, and how this overall program came together. Second, I'm going to talk about what most students struggle with and why they struggle with that and what are the key reasons why students are actually not able to be successful in research even though they are able to land some research internships. Third, I'm going to talk about how this program actually works from taking you to no research experience all the way to being a research prodigy. Fourth, we're going to talk about the formula for successful research. What differentiates a successful research project with an unsuccessful research project? You know, what are the key differentiation factors that really determine if your research project is publication worthy? Are you going to appear on the news for your research? Is it impactful? After that, we're gonna talk about success stories. Um, I've worked with a lot of people and students in the past that actually had no research experience. Some of them were kind of struggling and all of that. And working with me, I was able to get them to the destination of where they wanted. Some of them were able to be ISEF winners, um, published in the biggest journals, and you know, you'll see when we get to that slide. And lastly, I'm gonna talk about how to get started and how to actually get involved in this research program. So first, our story. So this is me, Ishan. I know personally how difficult it is to become successful in research with no guidance at all. When I entered high school, I had an interest in STEM and other subjects in that field, but I did not have any quantifiable experience in research. And I knew I had a destination where I wanted to go to. I wanted to be, you know, one of the top researchers in high school. I wanted to win ISEF, you know, win other science fairs, other research competitions, become a published researcher, you know, appear in the news all of those things. And I actually was able to accomplish that, but it did take me a lot of self-navigation and failures and all of that. But eventually I was able to accomplish being an ISA finalist, um, another science fair called JSHS, I was able to be the top 12, Conrad Challenge top five in the whole world. I published over 10 plus papers in top journals in high school, presented at 10 plus international conferences, recognized in a lot of news articles. After success, after appearing on the news and all of that, um, a lot of students actually reached out to me on LinkedIn. Um, you know, they were asking me questions like, how did he do it? Where do I start? And that was kind of the first thing that sparked the idea of the Young Researchers Institute. So I partnered with Phil and a team of other world-renowned researchers to create this dream program that I wish I had when I was in ninth grade. And we essentially recruited established PhDs for one-on-one -on -one project mentorship with students. And these are PhDs that have a lot of experience in, you know, navigating research projects from start to finish in the highest complicated fields of science. So we have a big team of, you know, really talented and experienced researchers. And here are just some of them. So we have Phil, we have Boris, we have Daniel. Um, you can see all about their accomplishments and their titles. Phil is the founder of Sanorex Pharmaceuticals. Boris is the founder of Calidy Biotherapeutics. And Daniel Hoft is an MD, PhD in immunology. My name is Dr. Phil Moeno. I'm PhD in education and a candidate in philosophy and biochemistry. I have over 50 years of experience in research and also in education. I've been a professor at Cal State University University system as well as worked in the University of California system. Education has been through the UCLA and UC Santa Barbara. Excited to work with um, with Vishal and also with uh, Ishan to uh, to train students in the research area. It's very important that that uh, researchers be trained. We have a step-by-step uh, -step process which involves uh, the scientific method, which um, is very productive in terms of generating research results. It's not always an easy process, but it's one that, that with dedication does produce results. Looking forward to working with Ishan and Vishal very much. So why exactly do students fail in research? In my opinion, there are a multitude of reasons, but here are three key reasons that students fail in research. So first is a weak project idea. Students simply just choose a project idea that might seem complicated and, you know, intuitive. But in actuality, when the average person sees your research project after you finish your research, the idea does not really have any quantifiable impact in society. Like your outcomes need to be something that can actually make an impact in society for you to be able to be successful as a researcher. Second is poor mentorship. Most of the time students are mentored by professors and PhDs. The issue is that some of these mentors and PhDs, they most of the time have their own projects and things going on. So when it comes to actually mentoring a student who's either in middle school or high school, they might not have the most time for mentorship. And because of that, students are overburdened with navigating the project themselves. And due to their lack of experience in research, they're simply just overburdened with, you know, having to figure everything out and 
take your project from an ideation phase to the end goal. And lastly is no recognition. So what exactly is recognition? So recognition is basically having your project being identified and valued by society for its impact and research level. So how do you obtain recognition? You obtain recognition by having a good enough research project that is accepted to top journals, you're able to present at conferences, and third, this is an extra, but it's having your research project and you as a researcher being featured in media outlets, whether that's all over the world or just in your local newspaper, but that is what recognition is. And most students simply are not able to receive that. So here is what our unfair advantage is with the Young Researchers Institute. How does the program work? As I said earlier, we have a team of PhDs who have already actually successfully mentored other students in the past who are in middle school and high school, they will pretty much help you take your project from an ideation phase all the way to the end goal. And by the way, they will also help you out in creating this ideation. Second, a research roadmap. So me personally, along with our team of professors and medical professionals that I've showed you in the previous slides, that's also visible on our website. Basically, what we will do is we will work with each student to identify exactly what your interest is, what your skill level is, and we'll create a custom roadmap. That roadmap will be from the idea all the way to the final project. Third, we help with publications and winning science fairs. So as I've said earlier, I have personally won a lot of science fairs, a lot of research competitions. I've also published a lot of papers. So I know the ins and outs. I know exactly what research project can be sent where, how do you actually package your project and make it research paper and science fair ready? How do you actually answer questions to the judges to actually win these science fairs? And fourth, I've been recognized in a lot of media, so I know how to be recognized in media for research. And we will also be helping students get featured in the media through our network of news agencies. So what's the formula for successful research? Well, most people will be like, you know, there's no formula, but as somebody who's been through this process so many times, I think for a high school level, there are like certain characteristics that can be replicated for successful research. So first is science fair criteria. So I know exactly what these science fairs and research competitions are looking for. And it's a very simple thing that they're looking for. And I will provide this to every single student who joins the program. Second is presentation. Um, research, you can have the most complicated research project. If you do not know how to present it, you will lose to another student who knows how to present even a mediocre project. And that's the fact. Third is research depth. Judges want to see rigorous analysis. And with our team of, you know, smart, talented, experienced people, we know exactly how to go into that research depth. Fourth is a strong idea, as I've already talked about. Fifth is world-class mentorship that I've also already talked about. Sixth is Q&A, you know, which is actually how to handle the judges' questions, objections, and all of that. So here are some success stories that I had from the past working with students. Um, one of the students, Arian Jane, actually, he he reached out to me on LinkedIn. He was telling me that he had a project that was kind of, you know, in the works. Um, he wanted to submit these science fairs and he was kind of overall confused of how to go forward. And I worked with him and he was able to actually win a couple of science fairs, research competitions, and also publish his research in a uh, really renowned journal. Um, here's what he said. He said, in the first 10 minutes of our call, Ishan broke down the exact framework that I used to win science fairs like JSHS Nationals. Before Ishan, I had called numerous other mentors, but none had provided as concrete and effective advice would highly recommend. So as I've said, before working with me, he was midway through his research project, unclear future goals. And after working with me, he was able to be an ISA finalist. He placed in other science fairs and research competitions and he published his research. Another student, Niraj Radaheli, he was really smart, um, had a really great interest and skill for STEM subjects. And after working with me, he was able to be an ISA finalist. He placed in other science fairs and research competitions, published numerous research papers. So you can see the trend here. The trend here is that students go from an interest to literally become a research prodigy. Um, we have a million dollars plus in scholarships from literally the handful of students that I've worked with. Like I've not even worked with that many students. I've only worked with a couple of students and you can already see the total number of scholarships. Um, the monetary value is $1 million. So how exactly can you get started and join this program? Here is a QR code. If you scan it, you'll be able to see our application and um, you can go to our website, yriscience.com. And you know, you can apply from there. The way this whole thing will work is each student will apply because we do need to vet the students and see how passionate you guys are. I think that's one of the most important factors. The skill set and the experience does not matter, as I've said. It's about how much drive do you have as a student. Do you really have the hunger and desire to win these science fairs, you know, actually publish research, become a research prodigy? So thank you so much for watching this presentation and hope to see your application.